Right, so let's have a look at dpkdf2, and we'll see how this method uh, allows us to, to, to store uh, secure passwords. Okay, so the method we would normally use to store a password securely is to use a hash uh, value of it. So SHA-256 is the typical value. It's a one-way function. So we go one way, and it shouldn't be possible mathematically to go back the other way. So this value here, Fred, produces this as a hex string for our hash. Unfortunately, it suffers from dictionary attack, when in truth it can build up a, a table of hashed values, and then they just have to look down until they find a matching one, and that will give them the original password. We can improve things by adding a little bit of salt to it, so we, we generate some random uh, bytes, add it to the password, then we take the hash of that and we add a bit of salt on it because we need the salt value back again. So unfortunately with this one, it's more secure, but uh, because SHA-256 is fairly well optimized, it's quite quick to be able to generate values. So again, it suffers from dictionary and brute force attacks. Often what we do though, so a typical method here is HMAC, that adds our salt. Uh, we often add a workload work factor to be able to iterate round many times to make it more secure. But again, computers get faster every year. Uh, and as I said, the hashing method is fairly well optimized, so it's fairly fast to go around the iterations. A much better method than these is the PBKDF2, password based key derivation function is defined by RFC 2898. It has salt uh, added to it. It also defines the number of iterations, so 1000 at least iterations are recommended, and we can actually define the length of the key that we actually produce as the output. It's used in WPA pre-shared key, WPA2 pre-shared key, where we take our passphrase and SID 4096 iterations and a 256-bit output key. It's also used in TrueCrypt where the actual key that's encrypted the disk is stored in a header and then that's encrypted by the key that we generate from pbkdf2. So with this we add in our password, salt value is already stored for us and then it generates this key here of a certain length that is then encrypts, decrypts the header, and then we release our key. One of these three methods is typically used, and then that allows to, us to encrypt and decrypt. The reason it's used is because it's fairly slow in actually generating the key, so someone who's using brute force for TrueCrypt will actually take an awful long time to be able to find the correct password. So let's have a look at how this method actually looks. Okay, so if you just load the page here, then you should find that it will generate some random salt for you. The salt itself is auto-detecting, so if you put in the value of salt there, it will automatically read that as ASCII rather than hex. So to test, we make sure that we it's working, so if you try these links here, so if we use password, and salt, so we can use the hex value, that's the hex value of salt, of the word salt. And then we should be able to get the same values that we have there. Same again, so let's try a count of two. Gives us that value, and then that corresponds to that one. Okay, so if you want to check, you can actually just pull up this page here. Just put in a value of salt, and there's the hex value there. Okay, so you can either use the hex value or you can use the ASCII value. Okay, so there's a number of uh, examples that we can try. There's a more complicated one there with password and salt, and with 4096 and 25 bytes as an output, and there's the hex value that's actually produced there. Okay, so there's the result there. 
and that's the same as the value that we have here. I've also defined it in a base64 string because that's what we also use to represent our, our byte patterns. We have some uh, WP2 examples with this. We always have a value of 4096, 32 bytes as an output, and there's a couple of validations there if you want to try it on another site just to make sure it works then you can use that link but it should be, all be there the c code the c sharp code is there if you want to have a look at it too okay thank you